What I'm going to show you now is an example of an audio podcast which captures the entire lecture. In other words, each episode of the podcast series is about an hour long, the length of a typical lecture. This is from a course at Oxford University called Building a Business. And let's just listen to a little bit of one of them. Good evening, everybody. I really am delighted to see such a good turnout uh, at the beginning of this, this course. Um, I think thinking in an enterprising way is something that is good for everybody. So whether you do decide to go on and start your own business or just think a little bit more uh, entrepreneurially, then I'll be delighted. It's my sort of mission in life to, to seduce people to the dark side of enterprise. So let's just pause it there. And I think that one of the effective features of this particular podcast episode is that the instructor is a very engaging speaker. It doesn't sound like he is simply reading from notes. It sounds like he is talking to the audience. And that may be able to sustain the student's interest if they are listening to this audio podcast as opposed to actually being in the classroom. Because of course when you're listening to something as opposed to being actually in the classroom live, it's a bit more challenging. Let's listen to a bit more. But a business card or a website or a marketing brochure, you have to keep paying them. So just a basic understanding of these things is really important in business. And then there's registered design, a kind of look and feel. Now, obviously, this kind of podcast, an audio podcast of an entire lecture, will only work for some kinds of content. Uh, for this particular one called Building a Business, I think it works pretty well because there aren't a lot of visuals, or at least a lot of visuals, I assume, are not required for this kind of discipline. On the other hand, a course in art history or architecture or maybe even biology, math, where there are a lot of uh, diagrams and, uh, and, and calculations that need to be done on the board, obviously they are not going to lend themselves well to an audio podcast. That's where you might need to go uh, one step further and go to the video podcast. I want to show you an example now of an audio podcast in which each episode of the podcast doesn't try to capture an entire lecture from a course, but rather is a much shorter segment. You'll see that most of the podcast episodes here are about seven or six minutes in length. It looks like the shortest one is two and a half minutes and the longest one is nearly ten minutes. Much shorter than an actual complete lecture, of course. And I think that takes into consideration how students might be consuming this media. What I mean is this, that many students will be listening to this particular audio podcast on their smartphone or on their iPad or their iPod Touch and it's unlikely that they will be willing or or able to actually focus for let's say an hour and a half on an audio lecture. It's much more plausible I think that the students would be able to focus on a seven or eight minute uh, piece of content and then they stop, they might think about it, they might take some notes and then at a later point in the day they go on to the next segment or the next episode in the podcast series. These little segments or these shorter episodes can support a course or support the lecture component of a course in two ways. One is that they could be given to the students before the students come to the lecture and they introduce the students to the main ideas which are then fleshed out during the actual lecture or during the actual class. The other way of course is that the students are given these after the main lecture and they use the podcast episodes to really reinforce or to integrate the key ideas, the key concepts from the previous lecture. I'm going to play one of these episodes in a second.
perhaps the first one on cell division and genetic influence. When I do, I want, I want you to note one thing in particular, which is this, that it's not just the instructor speaking or lecturing for 7 minutes and 23 seconds, but rather what they have done in this podcast is they have someone asking the instructor questions, and then he responds to those questions. It's effective for two reasons. One is that it's simply more interesting to listen to an interview than it is to listen to someone purely lecturing. The other thing is that it helps, I think, to make the instructor feel at ease. He doesn't feel like he is having to perform, but rather he's simply responding to a question, and he's simply speaking out of his expertise in the subject. And I think that's very effective, because he sounds very natural, very informal, and it's pleasant to listen to. So let's, let's listen to a bit of this. This is a Bio 100 snippet from the ASU School of Life Sciences. So Dr. Elzer... Let's talk about genetic inheritance and the behavior of chromosomes during cell division. Can you help explain that process and the laws that are in effect? Right. So, I mean, the interesting thing to think about in all this context is that uh, our bodies are made of hundreds of trillions of cells. And that's amazing because we essentially start from one cell. So you were once one cell only, and that is the zygote, the fertilized egg um, that developed um, into hundreds of trillions of cells and we know so we'll stop it there I think that gives you a good sense of of the nature of this particular podcast as I was saying then I think this is a good example of a podcast series in which the podcast episodes support the main lecture by focusing on key concepts and they could be presented to the students either in advance or after the classes themselves I want to show you another kind of video podcast, specifically the kind that attempts to capture the classroom experience by bringing a camera and microphone into the classroom or into the lecture hall and then filming everything that happens there. Now that might sound like a really good idea. It might sound as if you are going to replicate the experience of the students who are who are actually in the classroom. In actual practice, though, I think what happens is a much less effective learning experience than if you were to provide the same content through a screencast. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to begin to play one episode, and I'll pause it as we go along. For those of you in the aisles, you might want to go to 10 Evans, either find a seat. So just the first thing to note is a a technical problem, which is that the instructor here has forgot to turn on his microphone after the class began. And that demonstrates how creating a podcast, a video podcast in this way, it's a very unforgiving medium because every tiny error or big error that the instructor makes during the classroom is captured on the videotape and that is what goes out to the students. Let's proceed. Okay, here is another issue with this kind of podcast, which is that the instructor is writing on the board, the blackboard or the whiteboard, and the camera at the back of the room is attempting to pick up what is being written there, and it's not doing a very good job. The problem here isn't with the instructor's handwriting, it's with the resolution of the camera. The student who is watching this from home or on the computer screen or imagine on a tiny smartphone will not be able to read what is on the board very easily. Let's move ahead again. Poli, we call it. And here too, this is being projected onto the screen at the front of the class, but it's not being picked up well at all by the camera at the back of the room. And students watching this uh, from home simply will not be able to make out what is on this slide. They're not getting the content. Good answering email. So what's covered in this course? Mike talked about that. Here's another problem with this form of video podcast, which is that if the instructor leaves the the center of the stage, the camera often will not follow him or her, and the person watching is left with 
uh, an empty stage, which is which is not conducive to feeling engaged with with your learning. Finally, the the last problem that I would suggest is associated with this form of po of podcast is that you're seeing the students, but you're seeing the back of the heads of the students. That too is is not a very engaging experience. It makes the person watching this as a video podcast feel disengaged from the learning experience rather than a part of it. This is an example of a video podcast which has been done at the University of Nottingham for a level three course in mathematics and it's an example in which each episode of the podcast series represents an entire lecture that was given in the course. So let's look at one of these. Uh, let's choose this one. It is devoted to the Bayer Category Theorem. The length of the whole podcast episode is 45 minutes. I'm only going to show you a, a couple of seconds of it just to so you can get a sense of it and I'll also use that to talk about a few other things. So we click it, it opens, we get the credits from the University of Nottingham and then the lecture itself begins. Okay, so let me remind you what was going on in the uh, lecture before we had our revision session. So we looked at open balls and closed balls, and I've given you the notation for that. Okay, so I'll pause it there, and I'll point out a few things that are probably pretty obvious, but worth noting. So first of all, this is technically a kind of video podcast which is called a screencast and it gets that name because the primary area which is displayed isn't the the room in which the class is taking place but rather it is the actual screen which is on display for the students the screen to which the instructor is speaking or or which he is commenting upon the other thing is that down in the lower right of the screencast you'll see a small square and that is called a picture in the picture and it is of the instructor who is giving the lecture in a sense it's not strictly speaking necessary because he is uh, simply speaking toward his notes but it does help to personalize the lecture you're not just hearing the voice of the instructor but you're also getting a sense of his his demeanor and uh, nonverbal communication and that can help to to make the make the experience more authentic and and more meaningful you can also fast forward through the podcast That's the ball, so we've got to prove lemma 1.4 so you can imagine that if you are a student and you are wanting to review part of the lecture, you find the part of the lecture that was particularly challenging or that you don't recall as well, and you can focus on that. All in all then, I think this is an example of a very good use of how a video podcast can capture an entire lecture and that can then subsequently be distributed to the students in the course. Here's another way of using podcasts to support what happens in the classroom. And that is to use a podcast to deliver content to students that the students either already should know, in other words it might be some basic prerequisite knowledge that students should know before they come into the class, or it might be information or knowledge that students need to be exposed to repeatedly throughout a course in order to absorb it, or it might even be material which is simply not very interesting to teach for example, when I used to teach English literature courses at, at a university, I did not enjoy teaching grammar and sentence structure to students. What really interests me is the literature and talking about novels and poetry. And so when it came time to talk about things like sentence structure and comma splices, sentence fragments, how to use semicolons, things like that, I really didn't enjoy doing that. I didn't want to spend class time doing that. 
students in theory already should know how to do that and so that was the perfect kind of material to create a series of episodes, a, a podcast series in other words, in which I explained these various aspects of grammar and students could then review the podcasts whenever they needed and as many times as they needed and I didn't need to spend time in class actually doing that. I'm going to show you an example of this now. error that ESL students sometimes run into. Um, joining sentences together in this way is okay with some languages. Um, in some languages it's actually necessary, um, but in English this is a problem. And the instructor goes on from there to explain what a comma splice is and how to avoid it. And I think this is a perfect use of, of a podcast in order to deliver that kind of basic prerequisite material that students should know but which they need to review a number of times before they learn it. And I suspect that almost every discipline, every course, has something like that. It may not obviously be grammar related but there will be some sort of material which can lend itself to these remedial podcast episodes. Podcasts, whether they're audio podcasts or video podcasts, can also be an effective way of archiving an event or a demonstration that you are unable to repeat every time you teach the course. For example, you might have an opportunity in one year to bring in a special guest and you won't have that same opportunity the following years and so you might want to capture that uh, either in audio or video and turn it into a podcast so that you can incorporate it into later versions of the course. So I'm going to give you an example of that kind of thing. This is called Inuit throat singing demonstration. Throat singing was done by women while the men were out hunting, so it was a form of entertainment. Um, what you would try and do is outdo your partner to see who would be the winner of the competition. It's also a way to sing our babies to sleep. Uh, some women have lullabies that uh, they use to sing to their babies. So just to give you a little taste of that particular demonstration, that's, that's clearly something that the instructor wouldn't be able to bring into the course every time, and so by archiving it as a video podcast, the instructor can reuse it over and over. So that's another use of this kind of technology.